So, what you'll want to do is take information about the period of revolution for each planet and then take information about the average radius of revolution. So these are going to be these are going to be the rows that you want to use on the next part. So we have the uh, the radius of revolution that's R and then we have the period of revolution that's T now each of these is going to have uncertainties associated with them so we want to try to graph that this is the next part where we graph the period and the radius so Kepler's third law says that the square of the period is going to equal all this stuff times the cube of the radius of revolution that's the relationship between the period and radius m is going to be the mass of the star around which the planets are revolving and in this lab that's actually what we want to try to find try to estimate so, so we have information about the period, and we have information about the radius. So we have that. We have this. And so we want... M. All right, so we want to graph the squares of the periods versus the cubes of the distances to each planet. There's an example graph here below, and it's not totally labeled, but uh, let's see. We want the period squared on the left, and we're going to want r cubed on the horizontal axis. All right, now I'm just going to get some information from our solar system in order to give you an example of what it should look like. So what I'll do is I'll go to the top here where we have several planets in our solar system with the period and the radius of revolution given. All right, so I'll just use that. Let's go with Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn as our data. I just have to quickly convert Mars's time to years, though. 687 divided by 365 makes 1.88 years. Then Earth, of course, would be just one year. All right, let's put that information into our data table. All right, so just for my hypothetical example, planet B is going to be Earth. Planet C can be Mars. And then we'll have Jupiter and Saturn. We'll do the same thing for the radii here. Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. All right, so Earth's period. So we have one year for Earth, 1.88 for Mars, 12 for Jupiter, 29 for Saturn. One, 
eight, twelve, and twenty-nine. So for Earth, I'll just give it one extra sig fig there, and let's take away a sig fig here. So one point nine, yeah. Now when it comes to the uncertainties, I'll just go by that rule of just half of the most precise digit. You'll have your own uncertainties when you do it. Okay. Then let's go to the radius of each. Earth has, of course, 1 AU as its radius. Mars is 1.5, Jupiter is 5.2, Saturn 9.5. Alright, so... 1... 1.5, this is in AU. Alright, so 5.2... And 9.5. Now let's just give a uncertainty, just hypothetically. We could say it was 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0 0.5. You'll have your own uncertainties, of course. All right, now that we have that, we want to put our data into a graphing program such as Desmos but before we do we have to square the period and cube the radius so that when we do plot it it'll be in the form of like y equals some constant times x okay so the constant here is going to be the slope and so we have to we have to basically let y equal t squared and then x can be our cubed and then the constant that we get will be the slope and that'll be 4 pi squared over gm in theory all right so let's square the values from above however as it says we want to propagate the uncertainty. Okay, I'm about to square Earth's radius, so that's just going to be 1 squared, which is 1. But for the uncertainty, it says that we can use this approach of letting the uncertainty be 2 times the ratio of the delta t over t, and then times the original uh, squared quantity. So let's just see how that would work. It all comes from partial differentiation. It's just kind of done for you here. Uh, so we're going to get 1 squared, which is 1. And then for our uncertainty of Earth, just for example, this is Earth. What you would do is say 2 times your delta t which is 0 0.5 over the period which was 1.0 and then just multiply by your 1.0 squared alright so what does it end up being looks like it'll be 1 Okay, which is, you know, not the greatest data point to use. <laughs> but now we'll do it for Mars, see if we get better results. 1.9 squared. So that's 3.6. Alright, then you want plus or minus... You know, for Mars, it would be, okay, so, uncertainty in 
t squared. Formula says 2 times delta t over t times t squared. So for Earth, I said it was going to be 2 times 0 0.5 over 1.0 times 1.0 squared. Now for Mars, it'll be 2 times 0 0.5 over 1.9 times 1.9 squared. So that's 1.9. This one was 1.0. Oh. Alright. Next one is Jupiter. So let's see, for Jupiter, we'll have two times five over 12 times 12 squared. Looks like a hundred and twenty. All right, the actual value of twelve squared would be one forty four plus or minus one twenty then. And then for planet E, that is Saturn. Okay, we got 29 AU plus or minus 5. So, 5 over 29 times 29 squared. 841 plus or minus 290. Alright, that takes care of the t squared values. Next we'll want the r cubed values. So that would be these. And it tells you to use this formula that the error in r cubed would be 3 times delta r over r times r cubed. So, we got a mean of 1.0 and an error of 0.5 to start. So that will give us 1.0. Now let's go over here and find the uncertainty in R cubed. Formula is 3 times delta R over r times r cubed. So for Earth that would be 3 times 0.5 over 1 times 1 cubed. So it's 1.5 there. Which again is not the greatest. We'll see how that works out. <laughs> uh, let's see, planet C, 0.5 and 1.5, okay. So 3 times 0.5 over 1.5 times 1.5 cubed. I think I'm getting 3. Point four. All right, so one point five cubed is three point four. Then we got five point two plus or minus point five. We 
getting like 40.6 of 41 or so. 141 plus or minus 41. Okay, it's supposed to be 9.5. Okay, 9.5 cubed. 140 860 plus or minus 140 all right looks good now we want to go to desmos.com see if we can set it up we'll put the period as our y values but it's the period squared and then we'll put the r cubed as our x values let me pull up desmos here all right so we'll just click plus to add a table here and we don't have to change the letters really yeah, we'll just put in the data that we had. So radius goes in the X. So 1.0, 3.4, 141, and 860. Then for our period squared, we'll want 1.0, 3.6, 144, and 841. Let's see. Okay, so three data points so far. Okay, there's the fourth data point. As you can see, we've linearized it because we squared the period and cubed the radius. And we just want to get a regression line now. So we'll do y1 tilde m x1 plus b alright great it gives us a uh, almost perfect correlation I mean so close that the computer is basically just calling it one in agreement with Kepler's third law and then for M, our slope, that's going to be useful to help us estimate eventually the mass of the sun. All right, so let's try to draw the error bars as well, though. So it tells you here in the lab to just come up with a new column for U and V, which is the uncertainty in each of those uh, you know things that we plotted and we're gonna to want to put these uncertainties in for those columns okay we'll do u1 I'll turn it off so it doesn't display right now but uh, u1 can be the uncertainty in r cubed All right, so according to my data table, I had 1.5, 3.4, 41, and 140. Those are the uncertainties in X, which is R cubed. Then here we'll put the uncertainty in Y, which is T squared. So that can be 1.0. 1.9, 120, and 290 from my results. Now we have to tell Desmos to display the error bars. And it tells you how to do that in the lab. It just says you have to write a certain code here. 
basically telling it to draw a line segment All right, that looks pretty good there. Now let's do um, the horizontal ones. All right, great. Yeah, so these ones uh, uh, are interesting. Okay, now what's next? Okay, so we want to set the slope that we're given equal to the formula 4 pi squared over gm. My M was 0.97643. Alright, so I want to set that equal to 4 pi squared over GM. So 0.94763. Equals four pi squared over G times M. All right, we're going to want to plug in what we know G to be, which is you know six point six seven times ten to the minus eleven, and we'll solve for M. And we can include the units of the slope. And I don't need that many. I don't need that many sig figs. Uh, let's see. I'll just do that. So what will the units be? Well, this is r cubed and this is t squared. So this is going to be in years squared. And this is going to be in au cubed. So any line that goes through them would be of the form, you know, t squared equals m times r cubed. So the dimensions of this would be years squared. And these dimensions are au cubed. So clearly the slope has units of It'll be years squared over AU cubed. So that way when you multiply the slope times the R cubed, you get years squared. So let's put that in. Then we'll do equals 4 pi squared over G. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. But here's an interesting problem, is the units of that are going to be Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. So we're going to want to do some conversion here to really find M in kilograms. So what I would do then is rewrite our problem and let's convert the slope to the units we need, which is going to be seconds. So you figure 365 days per year. You gotta square that though because years is squared. 24 hours per day. 
square that. 3600 seconds in an hour and square that. That takes care of the top units. But you got to get rid of the AU cubed. So we need another factor. Definition of an AU is going to be 1.5 times 10 to the there's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters in an AU. We have to cube this factor because AU is cubed down below. Then we'll put in the rest. And we'll find the mass of the star by solving for it. Okay, let's try all that. Alright, I get that the mass of the star would be 2.1 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And we know that our sun actually has a mass of 1.99 times 10 to the 30. So, yeah, the approach worked, worked pretty well in this case. All right, well, that is just the best estimate so far. And one of the things that the lab asks you for is, it asks you for a best estimate. So my best estimate was 2.1, 2.12 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And we have to get an uncertainty. But the way that we'll evaluate the uncertainty in this particular lab, like the way that we'll estimate the uncertainty, is we can use this method of finding a, a steepest slope and then a least steep slope. So this one's the steepest slope, and this one's the least steep slope. It tells you how to get those. You can make two coordinates uh, for, the, for the steepest slope and then two coordinates for the least steep slope. How does it work? Well, basically your error hatch marks there can be turned into error boxes, which Desmos didn't draw, but this is what they would look like, right? And so what we're hoping is that we can go from the bottom right corner of one box to the upper left corner of the other for the steepest slope. And then we could go from the upper left of the first box to the lower right of the last box to get just an approximation of what the least steep slope might be. And hopefully, you know, the, the lines that we create will pass through all the error boxes is the hope. So to calculate that for our data, Okay, we're going to have two boxes. So we got 1.0 and then 1.0 plus 1.5. Okay, that would be this point here. And then for the height of it, it was 1.0 and, and 1.0 minus. 0 0.5. So the coordinates of that lower right point would be 1 plus 1.5 comma 1 minus 0 0.5. All right, now we want to go from there up to here 
to get the steepest slope, which would be like this. All right, so Saturn is our farthest right data point. It's 860 plus or minus 140. So here we're going to have 860. And this will be 860 minus 140. And then for the height, we'll have 841 plus or minus 290. So this is 841. This can be 841 plus 290 is the idea. Yeah, so if you take those two points, put them into coordinate pairs, 860 minus 140 comma 841 plus 290. Let's just calculate a slope from them. So the M of my steepest will be uh, Y value. 841 plus 290 minus your other y value 0.5 then we'll do over the x which is 860 minus 140 minus 1 plus 1.5 yeah, that'll do it there. Okay. Let's see what that gives me. I think I'm getting 1.58 for that. Alright. Next, we want to get the M of the least steep slope, which would be from here to here. So the coordinates of that would be 1 minus 1.5 comma 1 plus 0.5 and over here we'll have 860 plus 140 comma 841 minus 290. So my M of the least steep, it's going to be this line here, going through these points, that'll be 841 minus 290 minus 1 plus 0.5 over 860 plus 140 minus 1 minus 1.5 alright let's see what it is I'm getting 0 0.549. The last thing to do with those would be to just take those values that you got and then just plug them in in place of the slope in the same calculation that we did above. So I would do 1.58. Times 365 times 24 times 3600 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the 11. We have to square that, square that, square that, cube that, and do this. it will actually be the smallest estimate of the mass because the M is in the denominator and when you solve for M 
you know having having a steeper slope means it would actually it would actually be a smaller m so smallest estimate comes out to 1.27 times 10 to the 30 All right, then we'll just plug in the other one. All right, and this will give us our largest estimate of the star's mass. All right, what would we do next? Uh, now we want to plug those in here. Smallest estimate, 1.27 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Largest, 3.66 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And we could just use that technique of seeing what the spread between them is. And just basically cutting that in half. You could do largest minus best to get the uncertainty there. Or just, you know, take the largest minus smallest and divide by two. Uh, so I'll go with, let's say, 1.5 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And I'll just adjust my best estimate so that I'm not saying that I know more than I do and that'll do it all right now certainly the accepted value for the Sun does fall within our confidence interval here so my best estimate was 2.1 times 10 to the 30 and then my largest would have been around 3.7 times 10 to the 30 and the smallest 1.3 times 10 to the 30 but we know um, the actual value of the sun would be 2.0 times 10 to the 30. Alright, so that's what you want to do with your numbers, with your uh, star and your planets.